This is Solving Rational Equations Part 3. We know from previous videos, to solve a rational equation like this, we're going to need to get a common denominator. But before we deal with the common denominator, let's take a look at this minus. That minus applies to the whole fraction, and what we've been doing is distributing the negative up through the top. So the first step I want to do is change this to a plus and make both of those minus. So here it is looking a little bit neater. Now I can think about the common denominator. The common denominator has got to have an x plus 2 in it, and it's going to have to have x minus 2 in it. So that is my common denominator. I'm going to multiply all three of these terms by this common denominator. So on this next step, I have spread everything out, so I've got room for that common denominator to be, ne to be listed next to each term. The advantage to this, as said before, is just a matter of being able to cancel individually. Those x plus 2's cancel, distribute the x here, makes x squared minus 2x. Over here, x minus 2 cancels. This is binomial times binomial, which means I need to FOIL that. So the first term will be negative x squared. Going across the outside is negative 2x. The inside is another negative 2x. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. On the right side, the x minus 2's cancel. FOIL this out is x squared plus 5x plus 6. Clean up your left side. The x squareds are going to cancel. Negative 2, negative 2, negative 2x gives me negative 6x minus 4 equals this right side, which hasn't changed any. Now, because we have an x squared in the problem, to solve this, we need to have everything on one side equal to 0. So I need to add 6x and add 4 to both sides. This over here cancels, which gives me 0. This is x squared plus 11x plus 10. The whole purpose in getting everything on one side equal to 0 is so that I can factor. So x squared, I'm going to have to have x and x in the front. These signs are all positive, so both of these are plus. What multiplies to give me 10 that adds to give me 11 is 10 and 1. And this is equal to 0, which is where I get to use the zero products property and set these two things up. I can set x plus 10 equal to 0, and I can set x plus 1 equal to 0. Solve each of those. This gives me x equals negative 1. This gives me x equals negative 10. Be sure to check. Plug these back in. Will either of these create a 0 in the denominator? No. So negative 10 and negative 1 are your two solutions. The two numbers that would have created 0 in the denominator would be negative 2 or positive 2. So had we gotten either of those as solutions, we'd have to throw those out. We didn't, so we're good. Similar example, but we've got a couple of things to deal with. One is that minus. I would change to plus a negative to be safe. The other is the 3, to think of it as 3 over 1. And the third thing is, get that x squared minus 16 factored out as the difference of two squares. The common denominator is this x plus 4 times x minus 4. That denominator right there contains the x minus 4 that's in the other denominator. Since I know what the common denominator is, now's the time to write out that big step where I'm multiplying everything by that x plus 4 times x minus 4. All of this stuff cancels here, and I'm just left with 12 right here. On this side, the x minus 4s cancel. This is a negative 24 I'm distributing, so negative 24x minus 96. Now, over here, there's nothing that cancels. You have to do 3 times the two binomials. If I have two monomials and a binomial, I multiply the monomials together first and then times the binomial. On the other hand, if I have two binomials, I'm going to multiply those up first. x plus 4 times x minus 4 is x squared minus 16. How do I know that so quickly? Because it's sitting right there. That was the factorization of the x squared minus 16. But I have to remember to distribute the 3 through there, which gives me 3x squared minus 48. Here we go again. We have x squared in the problem, which means everything's got to be piled up on one side equal to 0 to be able to factor this. So we can clean this up over here. It gives us negative 84 minus 24x equals the 3x squared minus 48. 
So to get 0 on this side, we're going to add 84 to both sides. This was a 24x. We're going to add 24x to both sides. I'm going to squeeze the 24x right there because there is no x term for it to line up with. Add the 84. All of this stuff cancels out. This side gives me 3x squared plus 24x plus negative 48 plus 84 is 36. Now before you jump into trying to factor this with this 3, notice 3 is a common factor. So I'm going to take a 3 out of this, which makes the factoring a lot easier. Because that's just an x squared now, I'm thinking what two numbers multiply to give me 12 that add to give me 8, and that's 6 and 2. You could still leave the 3 out here, but anytime you have a common factor that is just a number, you can just drop it off, because you could think of dividing both sides by 3. Now's the time to set each one of those equal to 0. x plus 6 equals 0, which gives me negative 6 for an answer. x plus 2 equals 0, so that when you subtract 2 from both sides, it gives you negative 2 for an answer. Plug those back into the problem. Will either of those give you a zero in the denominator? No. So both of those answers are fine. Last one of these. We're going to have to start by factoring each of these. We can factor a 2 out of here and factor a 4 out of there, which gives us this. We need to name the LCD. Well, the good news is we have an x plus 1 in every denominator, so it has to be part of the common denominator. Numerically, you have a 2, you have a 4. 2 does go into 4, so that makes 4 times x plus 1 the common denominator. That needs to be multiplied times each one of those terms shown here. And then we're ready to cancel. x plus 1 cancels with x plus 1. 2 goes into 4 twice. 2 times x is 2x. Here, all of it cancels, the 4 and the x plus 1, and I just have 2x minus 16. On the right side, the x plus 1's cancel. Distribute the 4 through here is 8x minus 12. We don't have a squared in the problem, so this is a matter of clean up each side and then get your x's to one side and your numbers to the other. I think the easy thing to do would be to subtract 4x from both sides. Those cancel, leaving a negative 16 behind. 8x minus 4x is 4x minus 12. Let's add 12 to both sides. Negative 4 equals 4x. Undo this multiplication by dividing both sides by 4, and we have x equals negative 1 as a solution. But wait! Plug it in and check. Put a negative 1 in here. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0 in the denominator. We're not allowed to have 0 in the denominator. So the only answer we got doesn't work. That means that answer gets thrown out, and our answer is either this symbol, the empty set, or you could write out in words, no solution. So finally we have one that when we checked it, it didn't work, and that's what gave us the no solution.